Hey, this is Madeline Sklar. And Suze Cooper, and you're listening to All Things Audio. So, we're diving in with spaces from the top, Madeline. What did you find first of all this week? We are. We got lots to talk about with Twitter Spaces. Well, Twitter Spaces put out a tweet one day ago saying that they are uh, now allowing some people to be able to browse the Spaces tab on mobile by topic. And I have it. And it is really cool. And I know last week we talked about how we've come to realize there are different versions of the Spaces tab and you have an older version and I have whatever the newest version is. Now, this is part of the newest version. So I doubt you don't have this, right? This new. No, I still topics. don't have this. I even had an update on my app last week and I thought, aha, this is it. This is the update. This will be my spaces tab actually being useful for me. But no, I still have such a basic version of it that I need to know what I'm searching for before I search for it because I have no filter system there at all. No buttons, no anything. But this looks really good and, and you've got it. So what have they added that's an improvement to it, Madeline? Well, it's it's really interesting. So when you're in the Spaces tab, and if you don't know this, you haven't noticed this yet, when you're on the Twitter mobile app, if you're listening live right now to this room, you need to minimize at the top left, that little arrow down, minimize. And when you look at your navigation at the bottom, you should see a newer icon. It's, it's shaped like a little microphone. And when you, if you have that, that is this new Spaces tab. Now, I've had it for a long time. I, they've been allowing me to test it. Uh, for quite some time, and it's gone through a lot of iterations. I I really like this new one, where uh, not only do we have the ability to do a search at the top, and I believe you can too, right, Suze? You can actually do a keyword search, right? Yeah, that's all I can do. Yeah, just a keyword. I'm so glad they have that because it took a long time before I even had that in the tab. Uh, But now, right underneath where you can do a keyword search, they uh, have some new sections. So, it starts off defaulted for you. And it's just showing me like spaces they think I'm going to like and then spaces where people I follow are talking or hosting. And so it just goes through a whole bunch of different rooms. But next to it is using these topic keywords. So I see business and finance, sports, news, music, entertainment, technology, gaming, and cryptocurrency. Those are the different choices. I like this because let's say I just want to focus on business and finance. I would tap on that and it's going to pull up rooms, whether they're live or scheduled, that relate to business and finance as a topic. Now, what's really important to know here is that if you're hosting a room, you're you're scheduling a room, you have the ability to add up to three topics. If you've not been doing this, you need to start now because that's how it's going to connect people to your room through this tab. So this... By me tapping on business and finance, it's because it's showing me rooms that are set. But you know what? Here's what's interesting. You would think that's what it is. They even say in the in the spaces tweet that we're showing in the nest, it even says that to start tagging it with relevant topics so people will find you easily. So I'm in business and finance. When I'm looking at the live rooms right now, Suze, you know, it shows you what the three topics are. I'm not seeing this topic. <laughs> I don't see business. The first one at the top is it right now there's a live room talking about the crypto market and it's showing the three topics as cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin cr- cryptocurrency and fintech. So they don't even have business, but but because it is related to business and finance, I guess that's why they put that in there. But then there's another one below it that's NFTs, digital creators and education. So so they have uh, NFTs, digital creators, and education. So why is that showing up under business and finance? That seems a little odd. So I don't. I think they still got some work to do. But over overall, though, is pretty cool. Like if I click on sports, it's going to show me a bunch of different sports rooms uh, for spaces. And there's you know the news one is pretty good. Technology. I'm kind of liking this. I, it's definitely an improvement. Every time I get a new version of the Spaces tab, it's better than before. I mean, it makes 
it makes more sense as well for creators, doesn't it, that we're putting these topics on there. I mean, it, it sort of felt like a bit of a lost leader. We were doing it because it was something that was available to us to do, but it didn't seem to connect to anything in the back end, whereas now this seems like it's much more likely to actually help with this discoverability issue that we've all been, you know, banging on about for so long. <laughs> exactly. But I, I think it's a smart move. I, I'm just surprised that they have you on a much different version, like, it just keeps getting better and better. Why not just put everybody on this newer version that's testing it right now instead of you being a few versions behind me? That just makes no sense. Yeah, I don't understand it either. <laughs> but we're really excited about this because this is a great step in the direction of better discoverability for Twitter spaces. So kudos to Twitter for constantly improving this tab. And I'm, I'm really glad that they are incorporating topics right into the tab. So I think that's that's huge news. So, you know, we wanted this to be first on our list today because this is really important. Discoverability is probably one of the biggest issues people talk about when it comes to finding rooms they're interested in and spaces. People complain that there's they just can't find rooms that interest them. And this is such an easy way to fix that. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And, you know, I think as well, it's not just the Spaces tab that's getting some improvements. It's still Spaces as a whole. Um, our next tweet that we're looking at is around um, people on Android actually being given a bit more information about the Spaces that are live at the top of their timeline. What do you know about this, Madeline? Yeah, this is excellent news to hear because we know they focus so much on iOS and not as much with uh, the Android folks, and we don't want them to be ignored either. So this is really cool. The screenshot is very interesting. I don't have an Android, so you know, I'm, I'm iOS, I'm on an iPhone, but when you're at the top of your home feed on mobile, if you're on an Android, it's going to give you a little bit more information, like showing you who's hosting or, or who's speaking or what the topic is. And I think that is definitely a, an improvement for discoverability for those on Android. So I, I like that they're doing that. But here's what's interesting. So, you know, I see this tweet and I'm like, oh, this is great. But I've noticed, and I don't know if you've noticed this yet, Suze, and I don't know if it's because my discoverability tab has just improved dramatically. But when I'm on the home screen now on my mobile, on my iPhone, I no longer have that timeline at the top of the home screen where I would still see, you know, live rooms going across the screen there with the ah, purple. That's interesting. Yeah. And and I did not notice that until this newest version of the spaces tab that I just received. So I'm wondering if their thinking is um, maybe that they've got discoverability down really well now. So there's no need to have it at the timeline. Do you, do you notice if yours is still showing that? Can you still see live rooms at the top of your home feed? Yeah, I'm still well, I'm still seeing the space bar. The space, yeah, yeah. I'm still see I don't have any more really? it's gone like it's, oh wait hold on hold on it's been gone like all day for me but you know what is I keep back? refreshing all of a sudden it just literally <laughs> popped up it heard you that's what it was it did it did hear me because I because I you know earlier today I was like you know I don't think I've seen it in a while it seems to have disappeared for me and I kept looking for it and it kept you know going to the top kept refreshing and nothing and I was like okay maybe they're maybe the plan is to phase that out but now all of a sudden it literally just popped back up. So now I see it. I do sometimes have to refresh quite a few times to see it. Um, what I like about this, though, about this kind of more information is, so on my iPhone at the moment, on the space bar, when I look at All Things Audio, it says, All Things Audio with Suze. That's our title. Because that's the number of characters that you can fit, I'm guessing, underneath that, that section. So it cuts out the bit and Madeline Sklar and the social audio news bit. So actually, if people knew that this was social audio news, perhaps that would bring them in. And in fact, perhaps I should consider that when I'm setting up the room, perhaps it should be social audio news, hashtag all things audio, and then our names afterwards, because what's going to bring people in more? So it's actually made me think a little bit more about that for iPhone users. But for someone on Android that's potentially going to see that kind of longer, potentially a longer character count, not by many, I would suggest, but by a few, um, you know, it kind of just gives that a little bit more kind of contextual information. So, yeah, I think next week I may well be uh, changing the title up a, a little bit, maybe. But I also like this idea of like, you know, there's a, a version here in, in the centre screenshot that shows someone someone is speaking, Patel is speaking. And that reminds me of the uh, the new feature that we were talking about over on Clubhouse, where they're kind of 
identifying whether or not someone's a listener or a speaker within a different room. So it, it feels a little bit like maybe this is the spaces version of that sort of um, categorising who's where and what they're doing when they're on the app, which is, you know, a, a also kind of really interesting to, to see that kind of come along at this point. So, yeah, an- another good improvement addition. Very nice. I, I, lo- I love that they're just constantly improving on it. And, th- and that's just, I think, huge that, that we know they're always working to make it better. I, I love that. Um, next up, and this was something we were learning about last week while we were hosting this room with uh, host Celine had come in. And, you know, he loves to DM us all these new things that, that Twitter likes to release while we're hosting this room each week. So interesting. And so this this is really I'm finding um, fascinating. They're saying that people have been asking for this feature. So when a host starts a space, a new space card will be sent as a tweet so listeners can reply, engage, and share. And we did a little testing after this room last week. I wanted to see what this was like because the way you know if you've got it. See, what's interesting, we're in this room right now and I don't see it. But you're the host when I was playing with it last week, I tried hosting a room and I didn't see it, but then I was in Hostelene's room and he had it. So it might be that certain hosts are, have the ability to test it, but at the bottom right, instead of the big plus, the little blue circle with the plus, where you actually compose a tweet during the room, it's going to be more of a bubble, like a comments bubble. Have you seen this yet in person, like like in the wild? Not in the wild. Because I played with it last, yeah, I played with it last week. You know, Hostling did a test and I was able to participate. And it's, if you look at the screenshots, the screenshots can be a little confusing when you're actually doing it. I felt like it made more sense because the first time I like saw this tweet and I was like, I don't know if I get it. But basically, instead of that circle with the plus at the bottom right, you would see this other icon instead. And what, what it allows you to do is that you can just start a tweet thread with all the people in the room. And it's almost like a little chat room in there, but it's part of a tweet. So the public could see it too. And it was fascinating. And and we were playing around with it. And I, I thought this was super interesting, but I wish they would let more of us try it out because it makes more sense when you see it in the wild versus looking at screen. The screenshots, I feel, are a little confusing. Yeah, I couldn't work out the screenshots, to be honest. I couldn't work out what it was trying to tell me, like going from one thing to another. What I do think is that it's a good way of continuing that conversation. And once again, once that tweet is out there and attached to the card and people start joining the conversation, it says on that tweet, you know, replying to, it would say replying to all things audio with Susan Madeline. Um, You know, it's again, another point where someone might pick up and go, oh, I might jump in there and see what they're talking about or, oh, can I catch the replay? Or, you know, it's another kind of dis, um, discoverability um, idea, another tool for that. So, yeah, the screenshots are confusing. I think the concept sounds pretty good. I think people will find a way to do it. In a way, it reminds me a little bit about the LinkedIn audio events, which are basically started from a LinkedIn post. And people are actually complaining over there about how that is kind of odd because you end up having a conversation on a post back in kind of what is essentially another part of the app and it feels a bit weird. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes down over here. Perhaps we're, you know, a, a bit more kind of understanding of of using spaces and, and potentially trying to work this through. You know, LinkedIn Audio is still fairly new over there. Um, but yeah, this this is interesting. I can't wait to uh, to have a play with it. I don't have it yet. You're right. I still have a plus button which will tweet out the space for me but as we've heard I'm clearly not being given I'm not being favored when it comes to these new (laughs) tools right now (laughs) I'm not always favored either it's very very hit or miss as to who gets these but Hoseline always seems to get all the new features to test so he's got some kind of magic sauce going on on his profile but but it is it is cool it makes more sense when you see it in action I hope they let more of us have access because I, I think it's interesting. It's an interesting way to facilitate more conversation while you're in a live room. And I think that's really neat. Um, next up, and I'm super excited to share this. Uh, listen, as, as Spaces hosts, we're always looking to get more analytics. Uh, the analytics 
were non-existent at first, and then they slowly started giving us a little bit. But what's really great now is that all hosts and co-hosts now have the access. And um, we've got two tweets that the one tweet, first tweet has an article all about it. The second tweet is actually from Spaces with some screenshots. And these screenshots are great. I mean, this is so nice. So when the room has ended and you go back to the replay, um, as a host or co-host, you see the little uh, icon, like a little chart, like a bar chart icon for analytics. You tap on that and it opens up a new screen and it shows you uh, how many people tuned in and how many were live listeners versus the recorded replays, how many co-hosts, how many speakers and the duration. Now, previously I had some analytics. I imagine you did too, Suze. Uh, but it wasn't laid out like this and it was a little bit harder to find and it was really tiny and th this is so much nicer. I think this is a great layout. I would like to see more. I would like them to show us all the speakers. That would be great. I'm hoping that's going to come next where, because I know when you, on one of the screens, it does show you, um, show you that, but I would like to have a, a screen where I can see all the analytics and all of the speakers and host and co-host. It's good. And we've always said kind of any analytics, any native analytics that Twitter are going to give the, give us, we will certainly lap them up. I mean, I would still say that at the moment, I, I prefer the, the Twitter dashboard, Andrew's um, third party tool that he's sort of in, in beta working on, gives all the things that we're talking about, you know, the list of speakers, all of those kind of things. So I would still actually go for that over this at the moment but you know Twitter are getting there I think they've heard that we want the data everyone always wants the data that's that's how we can tweak the content and improve and build um you know so we, we do need to know these stats and figures um so it's, it's great that they've made it better to see as well it was absolutely tiny before and very very difficult to to sort of take down and, and take note of. So it would be good if it would be brought into the actual analytics page, Madeline. You know, like when, when you're actually on desktop and you can find your analytics. Yes. I'd love to see it there so I could see all my spaces in one place. I would love that too. I don't think that's happening yet though, is it? This is just mobile. No, not yet, but I imagine it's coming. Listen, when it comes to analytics on Twitter, they were very slow to give us access. You know, many, many years ago, the only way you could get analytics on your own Twitter account through Twitter was through the ads platform. Can you believe it? Not everybody uses Twitter ads. I have never been a big fan of Twitter ads, but many years ago, you had to actually sign up for an ads account, which is free. You just have to put a credit card on file. It doesn't mean you have to use the ads platform, but they used to have some really great features over there like Media Studio and Analytics. Eventually, they moved the analytics on your regular navigation on desktop. So these days when you're on desktop, you click on more and you'll see analytics. But once they had moved that over and you could easily access it, for the longest time they had the video stats in beta. So you could get to it through the Twitter analytics, but it was a whole separate section of just video stats. And I thought that was interesting for a really long time. That's how you would access it through this because it would say beta. And I'm like, hmm, okay. I'm wondering if they're going to at some point do the same thing, but with spaces where we're going to get these audio stats, they'll probably make it a beta version, but have it over there in the analytics at some point. So we can have that ability to, to see this kind of data over where it should result. I mean, because here's the thing, I'll back up for a second. When we're on Twitter, whether you're on desktop or mobile, any of your tweets at all, any tweets of yours, you're going to see under the tweet, a little icon for analytics, a little bar chart. You can tap all that on your phone. You can click on it on desktop. You'll see the individual analytics for that tweet. So I feel like that's what all we're given right now with spaces. We can go see the individual analytics by clicking on the replay of the room. And that's it. That's the only way we can access it. What I would like to see is having this all over in the analytics section, like you're saying, Suze, where we can see it all together. That would make more sense. Yeah, that, that would definitely make more sense to me having it all in one place. So I'm hoping that they'll do like what they've done with the other analytics. We could still get it individually, but also see it collectively over in the analytics part of the of Twitter. So my hope is that they're going to work on that. We know they have a big to-do list. Let's face it. They, they have a lot on their plate, uh, but at least they're giving us more analytics than ever before. And I'm just going to hope that 
we're going to see it in the analytics section as well very soon. Oh, and you'll never guess what. Someone's dropped into our DMs, Madeline. Someone who's not even in here with some, dare I say, breaking news. <laughs> of course. Hosseline always... He always has breaking news that he DMs us while we're hosting this live every every single week. It's crazy. So, yeah, I'm just now going over to it. So let's see. Spaces bar not appearing in spaces bug. So there you go. The fact that you can't see it is actually a bug. Now, what I'm now intrigued about is the fact that Hoseline hasn't been in this space today. And he but knows he knew what we, we were talking, talking about. about. <laughs> he, you know what? I bet you he was listening on desktop and says so why we, uh, uh, you know, yeah, sometimes at the bottom it says, and one listener, but you can't see who it is. Uh, we did have that earlier. I bet that was him. <laughs> so for anybody who is having the same issue Madeline was having earlier around not being able to see the spaces bar at the top of your timeline on mobile, it would appear that this is in fact a spaces bug. Um, Sounds like it's known to them. Sounds like they're going to be figuring out how to make sure it comes back so we can all see it. Um, But yeah, if it's kind of appearing intermittently or not appearing at all, then it is indeed a spaces bug. Good to know. I mean, I've always had it be a little intermittent as it was from time to time. But what I've seen today is the word I've never seen it this bad. Like it literally disappeared on me for hours. Yeah, that, that, that's so, not good. That's not good. But, good. but good to know that they're aware it's a bug. Now, you came across an interesting tweet that I'm going to let you talk about because um, I, I did not see it until you shared it with me today. So I'm going to let you take over this tweet from Ben Horowitz. Yeah, sure. I'm going to actually run through the next few as kind of a bit, a bit of kind of news in brief because we've still got quite a few to get through. And as I say, I'd really like to hear from from people that are in the in the space. This one was one that um, our friend Morgan alerted me to. It is um, a tweet that says, some news, we are joining Elon Musk's bid for Twitter and investing $400 million, is that what it means? Into the company. I mean, my goodness, what a figure. Um, anyway, the interest in this is that this is actually Clubhouse's lead investor. Wow. Just let that sink in for a second. So this, interesting. Yeah, interesting times. I'm just going to leave that with you. Um, And I'm going to move on and say that Nima has um, uncovered some um, reverse engineering magic and has revealed to us that Twitter is going to bring Superfollows spaces to the web app. Now, this is really interesting because we've spoken about private spaces, being able to spin up a space, you know, just for a, a certain group of people that perhaps isn't public. And it would appear that this whole kind of the Superfollow version of it is one way that they might be heading to enable that. What do you think of that, Madeline? Oh, I'm really thrilled about this because I would love to see us have the ability to do spaces in other ways like this, like those that are using super follows. Also for communities, you know, I, I have uh, I put together one of those Twitter smarter Twitter communities through the this new communities feature on Twitter. And I'm hoping that's going to be next. It makes sense that they would do super follows first because that's part of one of the paid features. I would imagine paid features are going to get preference first for things like this. But I would imagine next will be communities. Uh, So for those of us that host our own uh, own communities through Twitter, that we'd be able to host private spaces just for the community. Um, And then eventually, I would love for us to be able to just start a room and let it be private and just pick people we want to be in there with us. So I think this is the start of, of us seeing more of that with some private rooms. I hope so. I mean, not everything that we see in a reverse engineered screenshot comes to life, but I would say that quite a hefty few of them do, don't they? So um, and it certainly shows that there's thinking behind, you know, creating these more kind of closed down spaces, if you like, which is definitely something people have asked for. And I still see spaces now that are, you know, set up with um, titles that sort of say, you know, private space or limited to our group or or whatever. So, yeah, it's obviously something people are after. So it's no wonder they're looking into it. Um, The next piece of news is another piece of reverse engineering. We have tweets here from Alessandro Paluzzi um, and Jane Wong um, around the new ways to spin up a space. So effectively, they're adding in a... um, the spaces icon into the composing a tweet area. Next to the camera icon, when you go to compose a tweet, there could potentially be the little purple microphone. Now, the question here is whether or not when you go to compose a tweet, you're kind of in the same mindset maybe as you might be 
writing a tweet to spin up a space. Like hosting a space and writing a tweet are two very different things. Um, And I just wonder if that really is the right place to put it. But it definitely feels like they're trying to get that space's accessibility into different parts of the app and want people to build it more into their habit of using the app. I mean, what's your take on this? Yeah, I, I, the screenshot is really cool. And when we see people like Alessandro and Jane Wong do these reverse engineering, it doesn't mean necessarily it's even being tested yet. They're just uncovering things that Twitter is working on. Um, I've yet to hear of anyone testing this yet. But what I like about this is the ability to be able to create a space from the Compose tweet area uh, on mobile. I like that. When you currently go to compose a tweet, what, what's changed from this in, in this screenshot versus what it currently is, is the purple waveform to do an audio tweet. So the next time you go to compose a tweet on mobile, on the mobile Twitter app, you'll see the little purple waveform. Play with it. Tap on it. You can just talk. And that's an, a, an audio tweet. It's very cool. So what I'm wondering is, are they going to replace it with this now, what we see in the screenshot? Because it doesn't look like they're having that in addition to unless it's just the screen it doesn't look like the screenshot is cut off um so i don't know i don't know you know what's going to happen with this but i would think my prediction is because very few people use the audio tweet feature they probably figure let's make it easier for people to start a space in a composed tweet versus the, the having a place for people to do audio tweets that very few people are using i just hope they don't get rid of it completely maybe have some other way of using it Um, but it'll be interesting to see how that's going to pan out. Yeah, I mean, I see Jennifer's here listening in the space. I'd love to know how you feel about that because I know you do them pretty much daily still. And, um, you know, I've certainly done them more regularly in the past and really enjoyed them. I think it would be a shame to lose them. I mean, certainly there's still a way of doing an audio tweet live, which is essentially the video, but just the audio part of it, like a video tweet, but just using the audio. Um, And I guess, I've said before, I always felt like voice tweets, when they introduced those, they were kind of the stepping stone to what Spaces has become. So potentially, you know, they're thinking if people are going to use any kind of audio functionality or their voice to tweet in any way, what they want is people to be using it on Spaces. Um, And so they're heading in that direction. So, yeah, but interesting to see it kind of... um, in 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 thought process, you know, with them sort of showing us how and where that might that might crop up. And there's also this starting a space about a tweet, which we did touch on last week. So this is Jane Wong's tweet. Um, and this shows a, a screenshot with kind of a menu, start a space about this tweet, tweet retweet or quote tweet. Um, again, I think it feels like they're trying to leverage Twitter's core functionality, which is text tweets, to springboard into how can we turn this into audio content? How can we get more people using the Spaces features? Um, But yeah, another super interesting thought around, you know, where Spaces is heading and how they're trying to integrate it even further and deeper into the app. I mean, anyone who thought that Spaces might be going away, I think this most certainly shows that they are only trying to get it further into the app and into different places where we might be even more likely to to click on and open up our own space really frequently. Right. Yeah, I'm really conflicted with this one because there's been a lot of talk on Twitter uh, since this tweet has come out, uh, people for it and against it. I even put in uh, Michael Sterling's response when I tweeted it earlier today because I thought he had a really great thought to it. But a lot of people are worried about spam and trolls and, and issues with that. I can definitely see negative aspects of going this way and very positive, great ways of using this. So it's, it, I find it really conflicting as to, you know, would this work out where, where people like this and, and it's done in a very civilized manner? But Michael makes this great point that it would be cool if it notifies the tweet author and others what spaces have been made. I mean, yeah, for sure. Like if I did some tweet, I'd want to know if somebody took that tweet and created a space out of it to talk about it. I'd want to be notified of that, you know, because what if they're going to have a very one-sided conversation? I would like to know so I could be part of the conversation and talk my side of it. You know, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm very mixed about this. Are are you mixed on it as well? 
Yeah, I mean, those are really good points. I, th- I think I always try and kind of see it as, yes, this is a great way to get more people using spaces and to encourage people, but you've brought up some really good points there about if things are taken out of context or if the original author isn't aware. Um, yeah, it's potentially, you know, this is why they've not made it like that from the off. And I'm sure if this is something that they are building out, it will be something that gets rolled out to a beta group and that small group will test it out and will work out whether it's going to be a big thing that we we do see in the end and whether or not those are issues that crop up for people. Yeah, this one needs a lot of testing because it's really hard to know, you know, is it going to be more of a positive thing or more of a negative thing? I tweeted this both on my Twitter profile today and my Twitter Smarter Community profile, which is private, just to the community members. Both tweets, it was very mixed. It was like a 50-50 mix. People are loving it, but then people, plenty of people like, no, 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 this could go very, very wrong, very, very quick. Michael also points out in his tweet, and I love this, he thinks there should be an option to see all spaces created from this tweet. That would be amazing. I would love to be able to see that. Yeah, I mean, that draws all the content together. And as a creator, really helps you, doesn't it, to to see those different conversations that have sprung up from from what you've said in the first place. So yeah, I really like that idea as well. I'm just going to run down a little bit of news that I caught up on when I joined the LinkedIn Town Hall on Sunday. Um, so LinkedIn this Sunday, once again, um, I joined the the one and only Town Hall that is being hosted over there um, by a guy called Rob Hanna, who is fantastic, but he's not li- he's not linked to LinkedIn in any way. He seems to have connections at LinkedIn um, and is giving out as much information as he possibly can to the LinkedIn audio events creators over there and anyone else who wants to join in. Um, it was certainly a well um, well attended um, space over there on Sunday, and he ran few, through a few different things. Certainly, there's been some. Um, kind of disgruntlement over there I think in recent weeks over the fact that they're not hearing directly from LinkedIn. There's also a bit of unease over the fact that there's still only a very small group of people that have been given access to audio events. Some of those people don't even want access to audio events. Other people are chomping at the bit and really raring to go and want to be creating their own audio events over there and have no way of kind of getting that access and functionality. As we've said before, all probably to do with it being in beta. They don't want LinkedIn to fall over. It's a massive platform used by many, many people every single day. So I'm sure it's all just softly, softly and gently being rolled out. Um, One of the things that he said that I found really interesting was around the fact that he knows LinkedIn really wants to encourage people to find their voice. They do want to support people. Um, They have some creator managers that people can get in touch with if you are wanting to um, request access to the audio events. And he also hinted at there being some um, learning assets for, for people who don't think of themselves as creators, but who want to get involved in audio events. It sounded like potentially there might be some I I really don't know what kind of content, but whether or not it's webinars or, um, you know, Q&As or something like that to really um, help people with how to facilitate and host um, those audio rooms over there, which, as we've said, Madeline, you know, it's not kind of a natural thing. There's quite a lot to think about when you're hosting a social audio space. Um, He did say that, um, yeah, they spoke a little bit about crypto being created for Clubhouse. And if if that's happening, then they, you know, I can really see that LinkedIn could be a great place for that to be continued. The whole kind of fintech corporate um, facing over there, crypto would certainly fit in quite well, I think. Um, he spoke about LinkedIn still being in testing, but hoping that it'll be rolled out to everyone before the end of the year. I don't know how secure that information was. Um, and how much knowledge he's really got on that. Um, He did say that people can check if they've got access by hitting the LinkedIn symbol on your page, on your profile page. And where you see events, you hit the plus sign. And where you would set up a LinkedIn Live, um, that is where you would see if you've got the audio event feature. So potentially you could be one of these people that has it and doesn't know or doesn't want it. Um, That's where you might find it. And the other top tip that he gave is that if you do want to have access to LinkedIn audio events, you should turn on creator mode, which I'd never heard of. I googled it. There's a whole 
page, a few kind of mini site web pages over there about creator mode. Um, I signed up for it. It turned on a toggle on my profile and I'm now on creator mode. So I don't know, that might help me in future if I'm looking to spin up some audio audio rooms. Um, Matt Navara also tweeted earlier today to say that live captions have now been um, li- have now been made live for audio events, which is also great. I think all of these social audio rooms need to be accessible and it's great to hear that LinkedIn have added that in. I don't think it's going anywhere. I just think it would be good if they could roll it out to a few more people quite soon. That You said a lot. That was excellent. Thank you for sharing all that and getting us all up to speed with, with LinkedIn. And yeah, that Matt Navarra tweet from today was great hearing that they've added the live captions for audio events. So that's super great news. So we've got some speakers here. First up is George. Hello, George. How are you? How are hey, you? how are you? Good. I see your tweet you put in the nest. Yeah, I just wanted to make a prediction that's in okay. that tweet. Um and that is, some people, including you guys, have mentioned that they anticipate uh, the innovation rate on Twitter and spaces going down until Elon Musk gets aboard and all that stuff. I think that is absolutely wrong. I think that the innovation rate is going to explode. So put your goggles on and your helmets on and strap in because it's going to be a ride. Uh, every First of all, I've been studying Elon Musk's psychology for years and years and years, and his innovation rate is 100 to 1,000 times faster than any other companies. Every, every one of his companies has an insane innovation rate. The only reason he fires people is because they're not taking enough chances and not making enough mistakes. Every team on Twitter knows this, and so before Elon even arrives, they are going to try to establish a rate of insane innovation so that when he and his team look at them, they will be looked at as people who are innovators and they won't get fired. The only reason that team is going to get fired is because they're sitting around waiting for Elon to arrive and they're smart enough not to do that. So you're going to see, even starting immediately, you're going to see an, an incredibly faster innovation rate. That's my prediction. Those are my reasons. We'll see if I'm right. Interesting. Wow. Love that. Thank you for sharing. Get ready for a ride, folks. <laughs> Get ready for a ride. I like that prediction. Well, thank you for sharing that with us, George. Uh, next up, we have Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you for being here. I joined right at the right time because you all were talking about Twitter voice. And when I saw that screenshot, my heart sunk. Because my little waves were not there. And I'm like, no. <laughs> um, I, you're right. Not a lot of people use it. It's possible that they're looking at the numbers much like they did with um, fleets and just looking at that and going, we have better use of that space. And, and they're really pushing on spaces because that's been their big breakout hit. I get it. I personally, obviously, because I do a daily Twitter voice, um, hope that it doesn't go away, but we have to innovate and change with the times. And if it does, then what does my daily voice become? I don't know. I Hopefully I don't have to find out, but it could be that I will be um, forced to come up with a new model for that. And that's okay. I'm, I'm pretty nimble. I can do those things. In reference to the uh, create a space from a tweet, uh, I'm, I'm, I want the option like on YouTube, you know how on YouTube, when you upload a video, you can allow people to use clips or to pull your video and create their own videos from your video. I always turn that off. I'm not saying or doing anything that probably would be just fine, but it makes, it intimidates me to think that someone could take something and turn it into something completely different. Something that I had good intentions with, and if they pull it, they can mock it, they can make fun of it. I wouldn't know until much later, and I wouldn't have any control over that. So I turn off on every single video I upload to YouTube the ability for folks to repurpose my content by adding my video to their own creation, which probably hurts me in some ways as far as discoverability goes. But I'm I'm like most folks. If someone wants to be mean-spirited, they could be mean-spirited, and you would have no recourse. And that's it. Thank you all. Well, thank you for sharing that. You know, I I would be surprised if they did just decide out of the blue to get rid of that audio feature. I know not too many people use it, um, but we know their focus is spaces. 
And, you know, when you see the screenshot of what they're working on, I mean, it makes sense to put that in there, but it is crowded. When you go to compose a tweet, I, I can't imagine them leaving both in there. Uh, but there, I think the workaround is still going to be that ability to do the live audio that nobody does. You know, Susan and I tested this years ago. I remember, Susan, when you and I played with this, it was like, oh, look, you can go to live stream on, I mean, technically we can still do live video on a, in a tweet. Uh, another thing nobody does, but you're able to go, when you go to compose a tweet, you can click on the camera for your phone, go to, like you're going to make a video, but there'll be, you'll see where it says live. You tap on that. And if you just turn off the camera, you're making a live audio. And I'm wondering, Jennifer, if that would be the workaround, like maybe they'll still leave that or maybe they'll move it over there. Maybe they'll let you do a live or recorded audio tweet from there. So I did not know about the audio aspect to live video. So that's helpful. Thank you. You didn't? I know I've talked about this before. Okay. It might have slipped my mind then since I don't use it. You know, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's probably where it is. Right, right, right. Yeah. You just go, are you on an iPhone or an Android? iPhone. Yeah, I am too. I think Android is pretty much the same, but when you go to compose a tweet, you'll tap on, there's a little, you know, it shows you a couple, it shows you the, of course, the waveform icon that you use to do your audio tweet. And next to it is the camera. And then next to that are, is part of your camera roll. But when you click on the camera, you're going to see capture. You can make your own GIFs now. So you'll see this new GIF and then live. And so capture, you're just going to make, you just snap a picture um, or, or, and you can make a video from that too. But the, if you tap on live, you can make a, you can do a live video tweet right now from that. But if you go into live and all you got to do is turn off the camera, it leaves the micro and it'll even tell you, it'll say that you're going to do an, a live audio tweet. So that I would play around with that. Cause you know, that might end up being your saving grace if they get rid of your ability to, to go to compose tweet and make an audio tweet, Jennifer. And I'd hate for you to not have the ability anymore. I know. I've had a good time. Michael was next up. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hello. Hi. Good to see both of you and everybody in the room. I, I was uh, most interested in the ability to start a space from a tweet. And I think I, I hear everybody's concerns about that, but I also think it's it really would only be the first step of the the whole feature set or should only be the first step of the feature set. Because if the person who composed the tweet has the ability to be notified or is notified that the space has started, they could jump in and be part of the conversation. But then also, if I'm looking at that tweet and I find it interesting and I'm like, oh, I wonder if people are talking about this. If I could see what spaces are available, I think there's a big community building opportunity with this feature where, you know, if it could list or show the ability for me to see what spaces are already open about this tweet, I may not want to start a space, but I would love to join in on the conversation. You know, if the Kansas City Chiefs trade a player away, then I want to talk about it. Okay, so what spaces are open? And then when I go into that space, I may meet a lot of people who think and 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 about things the way I do, or, or I want to get connected with. And so I can follow them and we can build community that way. So uh, I think it has a lot of potential, but maybe it's just not quite, it needs to be more than just start a space from the tweet. We need to also be able to find those spaces after they're started. Thanks. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, they need to do a lot of testing on this before you know they even think of launching this type of feature, because I, I think there's just so many negative things that could happen. But you bring up so many great points. And I really appreciate you sharing that with all of us. So thank you so much. Hi, Morgan. Hi, both. <laughs> Hello. Um, uh, I, well, the main thing I wanted to say is the rarest of things is some Reddit talk news. Uh, but before that, two tiny updates on the other things. So a quick update on Spotify Live is to say that I've been monitoring the room sizes there. And after moving to the main app, they haven't increased at all yet. So there's that. Uh, the other one is a tiny bit of Clubhouse news. Uh, they are redoing the navigation bar to make it look quite a bit like Instagram. And that's coming this week. And then they're launching social clubs next week. So that's what to look out for there. That sounds like quite a change. Yeah. Um, well, it's. I think we touched on it last week. But Basically, they're, they're putting, if you open Instagram and you look at the navigation bar at the top and at the bottom, and you have the big Instagram logo top left, you'll see the same thing in Clubhouse, except it'll say Clubhouse. 
Um, and then the social clubs are going to be put right in the center of the app at the bottom of the navigation tab. So that's that's what's going to happen there. Interesting. I love a UI change. I love to try and figure out what it is they're trying to get us to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, th- there's yeah, there's more things to be said about the social clubs, and but we don't really know what they are yet. So I'll leave that for now. Um, so on Reddit Talk. Yes, tell us about Reddit because we haven't spoken about Reddit for quite some time, and and you did send over some really interesting stuff earlier today. I want to hear about it. Yeah. So the the background for Reddit Talk is the very large subreddits are hosting very well attended talks, but they're quite infrequent at the moment. And the other bit is that they're it, they're finding it hard to get traction with moderators. So an example of this is the Reddit talk subreddit sent out a message to 40,000 subreddit moderators or subreddits. And four or five days later, nobody had replied to that request for feedback, uh, which I think is quite telling. So, and faced with this, one of the things that they're trying to do is broaden out the pool of people who can host talks there. So the first step is to allow moderators to approve any member to host a talk. So that's quite interesting. If you want to give Reddit Talk a go, it's probably a good time to find a subreddit, make friends with the moderator, and ask if you can try it, because they can now let you do that. Um, But the bigger picture here is, and this is kind of tea leaf reading, but in June, they're looking to uh, launch their own creator program. And it sounds like they're making some serious changes to how discovery works on Reddit. So one of the things that should be coming out now is their equivalent of the Twitter space bar. Um, it, it doesn't quite work like the space bar. So what it does is it shows you any talks that are going on by communities or subreddits that you've already joined. So it's not around people you follow, it's about communities you've joined. Now, the the very important part is the change that looks like it's coming in June is that it's going to start suggesting communities that you haven't joined but you might be interested in. And the other part of that is it looks like they might be rolling out the ability to create a Reddit talk to any member without necessarily needing approval. So this is a really big turnaround and it makes it much like more like twitter spaces except based around communities and not the follow graph for people so yeah so that's the that's the reddit talk news keep an eye on that because it sounds like this is a creeping up on us but it could be quite a big change yeah but it just does seem so odd that there's all of this happening is it really what reddit users want if no one's coming forward to right <laughs> to join the party you know right i mean the, the other thing is, if you look back at the comments of previous requests for feedback, the majority of them, and, and the one two weeks ago was all of them, were moderators saying, I don't want this. I, you know, I, there's no way I'm going to be holding a, a, a talk in, in my subreddit. So there is a question, yeah, about whether the Reddit community would take it up. I mean, again, it sounds quite like LinkedIn, where I'm kind of hearing lots of audio creators kind of say, well, lots of people who want to be audio creators say, I want this. And then a whole raft of people who've got it kind of going, I'm really not interested in this or I've done this for a few weeks and it's not for me. I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, It's almost as though the functionality isn't being given to the right people, if you see what I mean. I feel like with spaces like way, way back when, Madeline, you'll remember, was it a Google form, a Google form-esque type thing that we all filled in? I felt like actually at the time that that screening felt a bit kind of heavy. But thinking about it, that's one way of making sure that you actually give the feature to people who are going to use it. So, yeah, I I wonder if maybe an approach like that might have been um, useful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see if it works. So the other way of looking at it is Reddit, looking at what had happened on Clubhouse and, and then Spaces, were very, very wary about moderation issues. So the original plan was to restrict this just to moderators. And the idea that they would roll it out to all Reddit users, if that is what they're planning, is a real turnaround for them. Yeah, it really is. 
Okay, I think we'll move on and chat with Andrew. Hi there, how are you? Very good. I just thought I'd share, well, and also um, get a little bit of um, product feedback from you in regards to this idea of starting a space based on a tweet. I, the way we're doing it with the dashboard, if we're doing it slightly differently, is that we can already identify all of the all of the content that's been shared into a nest. So, what about if we could actually message you when one of your tweets has been shared into a nest? Oh, I like that. Yeah, I do like that. I like that thought. So, right. Oh, so I like already, that. It's already ha- it's already happening, right? So, our thought is whether you like it or not, your content may be talked about already. And as Michael was saying, it's almost a great community angle and a great way to actually join these conversations. And what we're also going to start doing is we're then going to create a leaderboard of the most shareable nested content across the globe. Oh, that's terrific. That's great. I like that. You do love your leaderboards, Andrew. Yeah, we that's just think great. it's a natural thing to do. You know, if somebody's sharing a piece of content that you've, you've written or you've contributed to, and then it also changes the way that your tr- your discovery is no longer based on the person or the topic. It's based on the piece of content that you see on the screen. And you're like, why has that video been top of the leaderboard at the moment? Click. And then you go and listen to the conversation. And that's our thoughts. And we're, we've got that working. And we think it, it works really well. So expect that. That's our version. Well, I like the sound of that. I think that's a great idea. I agree. I love it. Th- thanks for sharing that with us. And Dr. M, thank you for waiting so patiently. Um, thank you guys for this space. Um, uh, a couple of things. One is uh, not, not really relevant because you all probably have it, but I just noticed I have clips um, and I feel like I'm always, my account is like always one of the later ones to get anything. So, I'm, you know, that's kind of exciting. I just noticed that in this space for the first time. The other thing is, um, uh, uh, did you guys already speak about the um, Spaces tweet that said they are rolling out uh, to a limited number of people the ability to browse in the Spaces tab by topic? Yes, it was our top story and Madeline spoke about it and we're very excited about it. What's your take on it? Do you think it's a good thing? Awesome, awesome. Yes, sorry, I um, uh, because I'm working. I wasn't listening in the beginning. Of course, yeah, because I've been complaining about discoverability for a long time and just, um, you know, just the ability to be able to, you know, see, let's say, the NFT or crypto-related spaces versus not, you know, depending on your interests. I mean, that just helps a lot because, um, you know, I feel like it could still be a lot better in the sense that I've browsed spaces for hundreds of hours. So I feel like um, the algorithm should be, better be able to put the ones that i'm you know more interested in at the top and it doesn't do that but um but just the ability to be able to select them by topic um amazing yeah so i mean it's a it's a big um it's a big move um for discoverability um i've heard so many complaints of people just not wanting to see let's say the nft related spaces so that's awesome i don't have it yet um uh i you know I, i wonder who does but um yeah that's amazing gosh what you've just said there sparked off a little thought in my head, actually. Madeline, you know how you can mute phrases on Twitter? So like during the absolute height of lockdown, I muted the word COVID because I was fed up with it. And so it meant that my tweets generally didn't, anything that had COVID written in it was a, was a blanked out tweet. I wonder whether or not they will allow us to mute a topic. So, you know, we have heard people that are not happy with the number of NFT spaces that are continually being shown, etc. on their feed. They're not interested in it. Potentially, if we could mute that topic from our spaces, that might be a useful feature for some people. I would love for them to have a feature like that because a lot of people do complain they're, they're sick of seeing all these spaces on, about NFTs. But let's face it, that's the, a big chunk of the spaces these days. People, when it comes, because I've done a lot of research in Web3 and NFTs, and they're all about using Twitter spaces and connecting on Twitter itself and using Discord. That's it. So they're very heavy Twitter spaces users, and I see them all the time, too. And I get tired of it, too, because it's, like, very overwhelming. Now, I, Dr. M, I do have this new feature with, with being able to see the different topics when I'm in the spaces tab. And so far, I really like it because I can tap on other things, so I'm not seeing that bombardment of NFTs. But I would like the ability at some point to be able to, you know, put a list of topics that I'm not interested in. 
The thing I'm still curious about, there is a topics feature that's separate from all of this. When you're on desktop, you click on more in the navigation, you'll see topics. It should be depending on if you have community, like I have communities and that's first. So it's the third item down. If you don't have communities yet, it should be the second item down. And in topics, you can pick, there's thousands of them. And this just helps your home feed of tweets to be geared more to things that interest you. In addition to all the others, you know, tweets from people you follow and the way the algorithm works. And very early on with Spaces, I was telling the Spaces team, I said, you guys should incorporate this topics feature that we have into discoverability for Spaces. Now, I've been kind of assuming they're doing that, but I'm not so sure. I'm really not sure. I'm not sure, you know, how much of that they have integrated over um, because when I, what, you know, since I have the most current spaces tab and I have the ability to, uh, to have, you know, these different topics that I can tap on, I don't feel like is utilizing what I chose as topics to begin with. So I'm very unclear and I would love for somebody at Twitter to, to tell us if like, if they have used that or not. But at least we know they, they're seeing the power of discoverability through topics. And hopefully we'll just see it more of a cohesive thing as this goes on. I mean, I still think that the actual list of topics you get to choose from when you set up a space is rather odd. It's limited. It's very limited. You know, was it's not it, was... just limited, but it's really, really, really niche. <laughs> like, yeah, like there's not is. even... There's it not is. a podcasting one that I've found unless I'm missing it somewhere. Like basic well, stuff is crazy. missing. Well, that's just crazy. Well, in Twitter, and most of the personal improvement stuff is, is right. missing. It's only psychology. It's the only thing in the whole area of personal improvement. It's ridiculous. Well, well, here's something interesting, guys. On just the topics, the separate topics itself for your home feed. For the longest time, they had Clubhouse as a topic before Twitter Spaces as a topic. And I was dumbfounded, but I'm like, are you kidding me? So you're, so probably for maybe six months, maybe even a year, like Twitter spaces was not a topic, but clubhouse was, I'm thinking, okay, I'm more interested in spaces. I would love that to be a topic to show up more in my home feed of tweets versus clubhouse. So it kind of gives you the rationale from time to time of how they think. And so that's why some of this doesn't surprise me, but I did notice pretty recently Twitter itself when you're when you're setting up rooms and you're doing the topics for your hosted rooms and spaces that Twitter is an actual topic now and that's fairly new which I like because of the three rooms I'm co-hosting not this one but the other two I co-host are geared around Twitter talking about Twitter so I love that I can finally put that in but but you're right I mean it's very niche and and but not things that you would expect podcasting should totally be one why is that not? That makes no sense to me. But also, it it has um, it. What's missing now? It used to be um, was it live, recorded, and upcoming, and now those are gone, and the topics are there. Right. I would rather have live. You know, I'd like to have all of them, plus better topics. But uh, I'd like to be able to separate it out by live and upcoming and scheduled and. Yeah, I liked how it was broken out like that, and now it's not. So they kind of incorporated them all together because I've noticed when I'm doing it by the topics that, you know, it'll show the live ones first and it's going to show me some upcoming, a kind of a mix. But I agree with you, George. Hopefully they're going to come up with some ways to give us a little bit of everything because some of these features are great, but it seems like they're just kind of like, let's try this this week and let's see if people like it. Oh, let's take that away and put something else in its place. So it's like throwing spaghetti at the wall. I feel like that's what they're doing. <laughs> Thank you to all of our speakers who came on and uh, shared so much great stuff. And we're available in all of your favorite podcast apps. We're out there, uh, All Things Audio. You can also go to allthingsaudiopodcast.com as well. You certainly can. And you can catch us here on Twitter and use the hashtag allthingsaudio and we'll pick that up throughout the week. So that's it for this week. But thank you so much to everyone that's been here in the space with us and those of you listening. And we'll catch up with you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.